good. We're recording. Uh, welcome to the Andrea Home podcast. Today I have Manuel Alvarez. And I, if I have this correct, Manuel, you are a photographer, a videographer, and then you do a whole bunch of other things outside of that. That's kind of your hobby. Am I right about that? Yes, uh, completely correct. Yes, this is what I've been doing for the last uh, 30 years. Yes, that's correct. And because, well, through the photography and videography, you have traveled extensively as well as lived abroad extensively. Yes. Uh, if you want, I can give you a little of my background. So I'm from Spain, from Santander, a small, beautiful city in northern Spain. And since the age of 18, I decided uh, to travel. And since then, I haven't returned to my hometown. So basically, it's for the last 32 years, I've been traveling all around the, the world. When I mean all around the world, I mean living in the US, living in Europe, Africa, Middle East, Asia. So many, many places and always with the same objective, uh, which is, you know, to, uh, to enjoy life at its maximum. Um, but you know, particularly connected to my, my work as an artist, which is to photograph, to do videos, uh, feature films, short films, right? So always connected uh, with my passion, which is uh, the arts. And the videos that you do, are they centered on the concept of culture? Are they educational? Do they tell a story? What kinds of videos do you make? Yes. Um, what I, I mean, what I try to do when I travel is not just only go there, uh, meet people, you know, get to know the culture, the language, if I can, I spend one year, two years, three years. In some cases, I even spend up to five and six years in, in, th in those wonderful countries. But the, the best way uh, to connect uh, with the countries is also to explore it in an artistic way. Uh, therefore, I find that the photography and the video is the best possible tool uh, not just to enjoy walking a, or on a bike or taking flights or driving a car and photographing, going to places, but also to to discover the the culture of a, mm -hmm. of a geography. And, and, and a country is not just a big city and people and the work and the business. It's also the landscapes, the topography, uh, the architecture of a city, you know, what's happening there, you know, the people, the stories. So what I do is uh, I focus on that, on every place where I live, Mm -hmm. uh, the objective is not just because I want to try the local gastronomy or get immersed into a, a new way of living, but also is to try to get as an artist uh, something out of it, something mm -hmm. that I can filter uh, with my mind, with my creativity, and, and, and create works, narratives about these places where, I, where, I, where I'm lucky to be there and, and to live, no? That's mm -hmm. the idea. It's something I have some experience with because... In like my first jobs, I worked with teenagers traveling to Costa Rica, to Mexico, to, and we would stay with local families. We would like sleep in their houses and spend weeks with them. And we would get around hiking a lot of the time and with local guides. And I remember thinking this was one of my first experiences with like adventure travel or really traveling. And I remember thinking like, I'll never be able to go back to yeah. traveling the way I think people normally travel, which is like visit a place, go to museums, etc. Because I realized very quickly that you don't get the essence of a place. Like mm -hmm. if you don't really live immersed in it with a family, mm -hmm. with like, mm -hmm. it's such a different experience. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's still, even with that context, even when you try to immerse yourself in it, it's still hard to get all of those nuances. Do you feel like there's a certain amount of time you need or a certain amount of comfort with the people? How do you gain that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to tell you, for instance, about the last country. Well, two countries where I've been living, um, fascinating places. You know, I, one, one thing to say is that all places are fantastic, independently of uh, the culture, uh, the, the how many inhabitants live in those places, the geographical location. All countries are valid or are wonderful. But in my last five years, I had the opportunity to live in two places that are very different, but I've, I, I found them fascinating, and I will answer to your question. So one of them is South Korea. Mm -hmm. Okay, So this is where I lived. Uh, I spent years living in Seoul. 
and also in Tehran, in Iran. Okay. Ah. Uh, and and these are the last two places where I have a chance to to live and get that level of immersion with the countries. So so what I what I think is that in general, even well, if you go as a tourist for a few days, you don't grasp pretty much anything of the of the country. You see places, yeah, you get some level of connection, but you really it's difficult to to immerse yourself. Now, even if you spend years in a country that is very different to your own culture, uh, it will take forever to really grasp uh, the country, not only because there are uh, l- linguistic barriers. You know, For instance, yeah. I could speak maybe a little of Korean, but I would never be able to master the Korean or the Iranian, the Persa. You know, it's, it's uh, very difficult. Yeah. You know, uh, when I live in the Middle East, I ended up speaking Arabic, but I would never speak Arabic as well as they do. So it's always difficult to get yourself fully, fully immersed. So in the case of Korea, I knew that the language was very difficult and the culture was very, very different compared to somebody coming from Spain. So what I, in order to get those nuances, uh, what I did again, it was try to explore the country as much as I could as an artist. And if it was very difficult to communicate with people, I was able to communicate better with the landscape, with the city landscapes, uh, with my moments of escape on a bike, riding the bike, I, I, I went from city to city with the bike, with my camera on the back, with my credit card on the pocket. And that way, you know, I had my own adventure in full yeah. freedom, in let's say a full paradisal freedom when you are by yourself. Even if you don't communicate with anybody, you can still get the essence of a place because of, of the experience that you are uh, doing over there, no? If instead yeah. I'm, I'm going to the local theater in Seoul, maybe I will see a, a Korean uh, a performing arts or whatever. But me, uh, the way to get the maximum, the get to grasp a place and try to get the essence, as you say, the best way to connect it is through physical effort combined with creativity. So what I do is mm-hmm. I climb mountains, I photograph the views of Seoul from the mountain. I go to Tehran, I go to the Alborz Mountains, 4,000 meters. I climb the mountains, I photograph the mountains and the views of Tehran from the mountains. So always a, a physical effort. So in a way, it's like a communion, like a communion with the space. Because yeah. when you do the effort, uh, you build an intimacy with your space around you and the creativity to produce something, maybe somebody could uh, write about it, about the experience uh, you're conducting, you could photograph it, you could make a film, a short film, video art. And, and this is what I do always, physical effort and uh, creativity. Of course, when you're very tired, you climb down, you go down the mountain, and then you you, you can eat a fantastic Korean barbecue with the That's local true. people. And then you say, wow, what a, this is paradise. I've done physical effort, intellectual effort, immersion effort, Plus, I connect with the people and I eat the fantastic Korean food. To me, that's paradise. This is full immersion in a country, even when I'm not able to master the language or I have some cultural differences to be able to to connect. And another important thing is that the more you travel, the more difficult it becomes to really get immersed in the essence of a place. It's very difficult. So, uh, again, it's about um, creativity and, and the big effort. But recognizing that you are not like them is also important because you become also like a voyeur, voyeurism. You can enjoy from the distance to observe. You somehow don't belong completely there because you are a passenger in, mm-hmm. in, this, in this place. Mm-hmm. But you can somehow look at it as, as if you are in a balcony, let's say, that in that distance, it gives you the enjoyment and they, you know, they say the spleen on your mind to to really enjoy uh, the place. It's I mean, kind do, of you like, I was going to say it's kind of like you said that you don't go to the opera or to see a performance, but it's kind of like you see the landscape and the people as if that were the performance. That's a little um, uh, the idea. You know, the performance. Um, the performance I can see a Korean performance or lis- I can listen to K-pop music. You go to a FNAC here in Madrid and I can buy a K-pop music. And that's good. You know, I can see a video. But uh, what I cannot do is, is really, uh, for me, it's very important to connect with the space. 
Mm. If I, th th there is like a communion. When I'm in the sunrise, I'm climbing the mountain, and I have this personal experience with the mountain, and I go through it. I get exhausted. I get tired. But then my level of culmination is to be on top of the rock and photograph the city. And when I photograph it, then later I will publish this work or I will make film. You know, I pretty much enjoy of you know screening films on film festivals. So I travel. So what I do basically is not only enjoying the moment, but is capitalizing the effort that I do to take it to a next level, which is to show it to other people and create that level of inspiration and people can travel with me in a way. You know, so yeah. this is it's a little egocentric in a way, uh, but, um, um, you know, I don't waste time. Uh, my approach is I have a certain age. I have the physical capability to do certain things. I do them and then I materialize uh, some with my creativity and with my experience and my way of seeing things, I uh, translate it into something that I can later recreate myself. Now I'm in Madrid and I'm working on the editing many photographs that I took in Iran or that I took in China. So in a way, it's like I'm still traveling yeah. uh, through the art creation. And this is what I, I, I will tell people. I will tell them, if you're going to these exciting places, uh, of course, you know, enjoy, enjoy them, but you know, try to get something out of them. I think you are doing something, for instance. You are in Spain and, and you're interviewing me and you are not doing something this from your hometown in the US. You are doing this in Spain. So in a way, you are uh, grasping uh, something out of the experience that you are conducting in, in northern Spain. You, yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's a way of, uh, of, of getting a full, um, of, you know, the full possibilities of the, the experience itself. No? I also think I get a lot of life and energy from hearing everyone's stories. I think like I've I've lived a bit of it myself with traveling and and now I'm kind of staying more localized, but I don't tire of the stories and I really love those personalities of people who like feed off of exploration and understanding other cultures because I think there's so much depth to it. Like mm -hmm. one thing is to travel, but another thing is to recognize how similar we all are and how different we all are. Because I don't think it's enough to say like humans are humans and we're all the same because we are very different. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's something so same about everyone, you know? Yes. One thing that you've talked about a lot like and what that I kind of know about you is that you you gain a lot from traveling alone like mm. it's kind and I was thinking I think people connect more with you when you're alone people approach you more and feel more comfortable and also I think when you travel alone you're more open because if you're with somebody from back home or that you've always known I feel like you're kind of connected to the personality that you have with that person but when you travel alone, you get to kind of become a bit of the area and absorb it. Do you have yeah. that feeling where you you have more freedom and more, I don't know, more you're more approachable if you're alone? Yes. Uh, um, well, that's an area uh, it's important because many times, you know, when you're planning these trips, uh, you know, uh, if you want to uh, other people to to join the experience, sometimes I feel very tempted to tell them, to tell them, you know, why don't you join me and uh, and you experience what I experience and and I'm very careful with that. So I'm only able to do it with certain profiles. I mean, with some people I know that I will never tell them, let's go to Tehran, uh, let's climb the four thousand meters of the Albors mountains. And then you're going to be with me while I'm photographing for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, you will run down the mountain is, is screaming of happiness because this is what I do. I basically scream when I'm, because when I get my objectives accomplished is, is something extraordinary. And, and therefore I try to do things by myself. And also, you know, is the, um, it's a little, you know, what I call the, this irresponsibility of getting lost. You know, um, 
people, they need to have an objective of uh, when I'm going and what time I'm going home because I want to have dinner and I want to watch my TV program or the soccer match or whatever. And I say, you what, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in anything of that. I don't want any attachments or whatever. Me, what I want is I basically want to get my bike. I want to start biking, riding the bike in some direction. And I don't, I'm not worried what I'm going to sleep tonight. You know, I just get the camera and I photograph. And and it's what I call, uh, you know, I told you it's about, there is a term, I, I don't know if I invented the term, but I heard from somebody, is the paradisal irresponsibility of getting lost. I think it's mine. I think. Say it again, the paradise? The paradisal, paradisal irresponsibility of getting lost. I love it. Yeah, I don't know Wait, if I I'm going to give the podcast that title. <laughs> I, I think you should get it. I think it's a good one. I don't know if I if I heard it from somebody, but I think it's mine. I mean, I'm I'm not sure. Eh? I, I could debate because I've been reading books, and but to me, is the is exactly that. This is life itself. The paradisal irresponsibility of getting lost in purpose. Yeah. So yeah. so again, I need a little money to pay the the hotel. Uh, when I'm going to sleep, the hotel or the hostel or whatever I find, I get a bike with two wheels. I get I need a good breakfast for the calories to burn, <laughs> that day. and I need my 12 kilos of equipment in my bag it's with the lot. cameras, with the zoom lenses, and that's how things happen. And then mm. I, this is how I discover South Korea. I, it's, I'm gonna tell you something even even higher. Is to me. Uh, um, a country, a space is like having a relationship with a place. It's, uh, to me, it's like a love story. I mean, uh, I fall totally. in love with the buildings, with the architecture, with the even with places that are not considered as beautiful or postcards. Me, I'm, I'm anti postcard. You know what I mm -hmm. do is I, I photograph the other side of the postcards. But I actually make postcards of cities, but in a different way. And and this this is what I do. I, I fall in love with the places. I get. Uh, completely obsessed i'm obsessive i'm very obsessive <laughs> like some people that you know like you and me uh, i feel very very obsessive uh with uh, certain things and and i go for them all the way i don't i don't get in between in the middle way i just think well uh what i'm doing tomorrow well i'm gonna take a flight and i'm gonna go to Phnom Penh in cambodia that's it i'm gonna rent a motorbike and i'm gonna search for containers because I'm, I want to do a series about containers in the Mekong, in the Mekong River. And this is what I do. I take a flight. I pretty much don't sleep because I'm so excited about my next trip. I go there and I get the, my, my motorbike. And I basically cross Cambodia looking for, for uh, containers um, in the Mekong River. And then what I do is I go back on two days later. And then the next weekend, I say, well, now I'm going to Kaohsiung in Taiwan to do exactly the same thing. And I ended up in Kaohsiung uh, hiring a fisherman. So with the boat, I can photograph the harbor of Kaohsiung. But because it's military, I cannot go through tours. So I hire somebody on a boat. Yeah? And then I, I can, I'm able to photograph the containers from the sea when it's not possible. Or I go to Jakarta. And I do the same thing on a motorbike and the same thing in Manila and the same thing in Bangkok and the same thing in Qingdao, China and the same thing in Shanghai and the same thing in Busan, in Korea, the same thing in Ulsan, the same thing in Fukuoka, the same thing in cities all around Asia. I photograph and later I do a work about, I call boxification about, you know, the, you know, about containers in Asia in mega, mega harbors, no? So... It's just an example of how I, I drive myself, but it's purely, uh, it's purely the paradisal responsibility. It's myself from Spain. I have nothing to do in Phnom Penh, culturally speaking, but yeah. because I'm far from everything, I'm by myself, I can scream of happiness. I get a motorbike. <laughs> I scream on the motorbike. And then I, I, go to, I go to the cheap hotel and I say in Spanish, I say, esto es increíble. Esto es increíble. <laughs> and then my level of happiness go to the 99.9 .9, and I think like, like blowing up of excitement. You see, and, and, <laughs> and what I'm looking is, is for that. And even I'm here in Madrid, and don't, don't worry, I will find something. I went the other day uh, to Malaga and I, I saw that I went on the ballet train, on the high-speed train. I was presenting a film, a, a future film that I produce and I'm the film director. It's called Trains Bound for the Sea, the film. It was presented at the Malaga Film Festival, and, and I saw from the train this little town called Puerto Llano in Ciudad Real, 
and there is nothing there. And you see refineries all around and the little place and the rocks. And so, well, two weeks later, I went there and I spent a beautiful day photographing the refinery from the top of a mountain. I got out, I got the ballet train from Madrid. I was there and I was photographing. No? Or when I was in Tehran, even when the plane was landing at the Khomeini airport, I will find from the, I was traveling business class and I will, I will spot the new construction sites, the new buildings in the outskirts of, the, of Tehran. And I land and I take the taxi driver where to go because I have the memory of how to go from the <laughs> approximation of the plane. That's totally crazy. But you see, yeah. when I, later I do the photographs and then I publish them or whatever and I get academic people to write about new construction sites in Iran, you know, I spot those pla- spotted those places from the, from the flight. So you see, this is what I want. A, a profound a, experience with the place if I cannot speak to people because of the language barriers, no problem. I will connect somehow mm-hmm. with that place. So when I'm, I'm closing my eyes and I'm thinking that the places where I've been, I can reassure you that uh, somehow I, I, a part of me controls or connects very well with the space where, I, where I've been. And this is what I keep with me. And when I see myself that I, can, I walk every day you know, between 15,000 steps, 20,000 steps. You know, I do every day 12 kilometers. But every day, eh, Andrea, every day, I, I can do it, you know, uh, because normally when I'm in Iran or those places, I can spend 10, 12, 14, 15 hours uh, walking. I can I can do kilometers and kilometers and kilometers with my camera. So I that's need... A, to, that's it's a heavy lot, duty. It's a lot, it's a lot. Yeah. It's heavy duty. But all comes from what I was telling you before. Uh, enjoying a place... It's not just eating the local food or, you know, seeing the monuments. It's also sacrificing yourself with, uh, with that particular geography. And there is a, a very profound connection mm. when you do that. Because when you are more tired, you are also more sensitive in what you see. Yeah, it's true. And, and you connect trips, people, friends, your origins. You, you, um, you reflect a lot about who you are. What are you doing in such a strange place? Mm-hmm. It gives you perspective about who you are. It's you true. see yourself in a different context. So I think that uh, travel to me is by far the best experience I ever done, more than gaining any salary or anything. I would say travel is really, I think, what drives human spirit and and what and makes people better. I mean, I, I mean, this is how I this is how I see it. Do you think there's any drawback to living this kind of lifestyle? Do you yes, feel any yes, drawback? Yes, or? yes, yes. I think um, if you are in personal relationships, uh, for instance, if you have a wife or your husband or, you know, uh, from the beginning, I mean, you, the other person needs to understand with who are you getting <laughs> involved. Yeah. Involved, no? Because... Um, if not, it's not just like, well, I feel like going to see the soccer match with my buddies, with my friends, uh, Sunday night after having lunch with you. It's more about, uh, I'll be four days, uh, somewhere who knows where I'm gonna do my photography work, I'm gonna do my film production, uh, I'm gonna get lost, and 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 those days, uh, I'm not gonna be around. Yeah. Now, if it happens that you are with someone that really connects with your with your hobbies, well, not your, I don't think it's a hobby. I think this is a work and a passion. This is not a hobby. It's a way it's, of life. It seems. It's, it's, it's a way. It's a way of life. You, you need to make sure that the other person understands uh, um, what type of person you are. Because if 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 you don't, if that the other person does not respect this, obviously you you are going to feel completely diminished and, yeah. and, re- and reduced. Not just uh, myself, Manuel, but also I think in terms of a spirit. I think uh, yeah. to me this, this is like uh, death in the suburb. No? You live in the suburbs and then you become there with your little prison and, and, <laughs> and come on. They take you know? away like the essence of you. The essence, yeah. And you, know, and you know, the thing is that you don't need to go to exotic places. You know, travel is maybe going only 30 minutes from your place. I mean, it's, it's kind it, of seeing it with different eyes. It's like it being depends, vulnerable I mean. to the place. It depends. But you know what I really like, Andrea? 
I really love the idea of not belonging to a place. Yeah. Es, Do you feel that now? I, because I now it, you... Even in, even in Spain, yes. I have 30 years outside of Spain. Is that I, also I, hard for you sometimes, though? No, no, because I, I'm, I'm, in a way I'm like a tourist in my own country. I, mm. I'm enjoying Spain like I was enjoying Korea. Mm. Uh, I'm discovering my own country. What, what is easier is that I speak the language. I can speak in Spanish. In Korea, there were many days that I wouldn't speak to anybody. Because, mm. you know, I mean, I would speak to those who spoke English, but I couldn't communicate in Korean. When I was living in China, you know, I speak a little Chinese, but still it's very difficult. You know, the same thing in Japan, on Iran. So I love not being able to fully integrate. I'm okay with that. Because I flirt with the idea of... Um, uh, trying to get a sense of belonging, but also many spectators. So yes. I think I get the best of the two worlds. I'm a perma you're a permanent tourist. And when you are starting to really grasp the place, that's when you leave and you go to somewhere else. You know, it really Never does. Ends. I Never like ends. the comparison to like relationships. It's almost like, and how you say you, you fall in love with every place. Cause it really does sound like, it's kind of like, Although you have like your wife and family or whatever in one place, it's like you're going off with other lovers, you know, yes, like I'll well, communicate with you in four days. But not only are you there, you're sort of imagining that that's your life for a f period mm -hmm. of days. And you're like imagining that that's your family and that's your dinner. And, and you kind yes. of have to imagine as if that were a long term thing. But then you leave. Yes. I, uh, you see. Uh, I mean, maybe there is a word that it doesn't sound very appropriate, but there is something sexual about it. I mean, yeah, um, I can see it. Uh, pff, uh, you know, the, um, I mean, there are so many sublime moments uh, of uh, when, when you get lost in this uh, paradisal irresponsibility. And you see, when you get lost is when the amazing things start to happen. Because the, the, there is, I mean, you can program something, but what I love is that eventually, if you let yourself, it becomes something else. And I think uh, there is magic. There is something magical happening when you don't program something and you just you just let it go. So what you need is exposition. You need to exp expose yourself. And in, in those countries, you know, I, I find always with photography when I'm there, you know, with my tripod, with the camera, you know, always I have extraordinary things that happen. You know, sometimes uh, you are involved in uh, wars. I mean, I've been uh, in evacuations. I've been involved in the Arab Spring when I was living in Cairo. I was always under the threat of North Korea when I was in South Korea. You know, I mean, always extraordinary circumstances that make even uh, <laughs> it gives more literature to to your life over there. You know, there is an epic. I mean, sometimes when you're in these countries, uh, if you know, you you get. Your life becomes, in a way, you get some level of an epic scale because as a foreigner and being there by yourself, when you are surrounded with exceptional circumstances, uh, things happen. For instance, I went to Kiev uh, right before the, the, the whole invasion of Russia. And, you know, just to give you an example, I was invited by the Molody's Film Festival uh, to present my uh, feature film, Trains Bank for the Sea. And I went with my dad. Everything was paid. Uh, uh, so we were there a few weeks before the invasion. But you see, when you are there, you spend one week. Uh, I was with my dad photographing while attending the film festival. I was photographing the buildings. And then, you know, life is like that. You come back. And very soon later, the same buildings that you've been photographing are the ones that you see getting destroyed. So, you know, you, you say, well, Manuel, you know, how do you bring these documents, amazing documents on architecture and, and what you do and the built environment and, how do you do that? I say, well, basically, I'm looking for the story of a place, and I go to those places. And of course, when you go to those places, things happen. In some places, there is going to be a war happening. In others, there is an Arab Spring. In others, you know, there are other circumstances. So when you travel and you go with a purpose, even in this um, idea of getting lost, in reality, you know, you are living exceptional circumstances because things do happen. All the time. Sometimes uh, you go into sentimental relationships, of course, you know, not only with the place, but when you spend years with the people from there. Uh, sometimes uh, with people at work, you build relationships because you get a job. Of course, you know, I'm not, I haven't been in these countries only because I take photos. No, I had to maintain myself. 
and have jobs in order to to carry on with my adventure. Making photos I cannot afford, spending five years in South Korea and taking planes to Jakarta. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I've always been doing is adventure first, my passion is first, and then I use the job mm. as a tool to accomplish my, my dream. Yeah. And then with all the mistakes that you make, like everybody, you get married, you get divorced, you continue again. But, you know, I'm, I'm a dreamer, you know, so I, I don't lose the hope. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely thinking that, you know, I want to do things well. But, you know, of course, in these many decades traveling, of course, there are small disasters that happen <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's, part, it's, the, it's part of the game. You, yeah. you cannot pretend that it's just like a beautiful story. There are, there are things that you leave behind. Very good it's kind friends. Of part of the beauty, also, isn't it's part it? Part of the beauty. It's part of the beauty. So it's not just oh, how great, you know. Of course, so there is there are some trade-offs at the personal yeah. level, and of, of course at the family level because you know you don't happen to see your your parents mm -hmm. or your sisters, you know, uh, for many months. And you know, I mean, I'm very close to my family. You see, and particularly now, you know, I have my, you know, I have two kids, and I have, uh, you know, my my wife. My, well, wife, I haven't got married, but well, I have my partner. So, so you see, uh, um. Life is always travel, but always, at least myself, is try to be ultra optimistic, even sometimes if you make mistakes. But, you know, you continue and the next time you try to do things perfect, you know, but always you lose your good friends. You make some uh, um, you promises. Yes, we always keep in contact. But then, yeah. you know, 20 years later, some of the friends that I left in Paris, you know, but I haven't seen them again, you know, and. So you see, you, you understand, you know, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to cope, uh, you know, through a space and time. It's difficult to... So that's why now I'm very careful with promises that I make to people because I know that when you you live life in this way, you know, um, uh, the idea of getting settled all your life is, you know, it's difficult. So you see, I'm, I'm like a passenger in a way, no? Yeah. Does it... Do you ever feel like, like having to fall in love and break up with so many places and people and experience experiences makes you feel a bit like cold about it because when you fall in love with a new place or the culture or the people you kind of know you're leaving does that mm. make you yes. a little bit more frio like cold yeah to the yeah yeah the first uh on the first decade when you spend 10 years traveling um, you don't go through that thinking. But when you reach 20 years traveling and 30 years traveling nonstop, obviously, obviously, it starts when, to happen. I'm, when I'm with friends and I look at their eyes, I'm thinking, I mean, I like you so much. I wish I could be here. But the reality is that I know that from the first moment that I start to get alone, I know that we won't yeah. be able to see each other again. And particularly in difficult countries, in Iran, it's an example. You build strong relationships with people, mm. even se sentimental relationships. And, and you know that, in a way, you I feel a little something like, a, like an imposter, in a way, because you are getting um, the maximum out of them. Yeah, in, in, order, in order to make uh, the discovery of that space, those countries... Mm -hmm. You know, of course, when you are with local people, yeah. uh, it brings the relationship. It's not just a bike and getting lost, but also if you are connected in an emotional level, uh, it's a it's a beautiful passerelle to fall with the country even more. Yeah. So the way it becomes, um, it can be addictive. So what I've been doing in the last 30 years, I've been very intense, intense emotionally, not only with the places, but also with the people. I've been trying, you know, to try to understand them, to spend time with them. But all, uh, all of a sudden, you leave. And me, what at least I've been clear is that, guys, I'll be leaving at some point. Uh, I'm going to miss you massively. Uh, but uh, it's a reality that I have to deal with. And, and the, the, the difficulty of this is that um, I have accumulated so many countries and so many people from many places. And these, I think, expats, not only people involved with the arts, but anybody who is in any type of business, I think somebody who spends 30 years traveling is because they want to live their life. Uh, yeah. Life is only one shot. You know, there is no way back. So when somebody wants to spend 30 years or 40 years outside, it's because they, this is the life they want to have. Mm. That's the life they want to have. So I think that um, um, 
uh, it's sad in a way because you are all the time telling goodbye to people, but of course you are uh, getting so much enrichment from so many people from so many places. So when I was in China, I made local friends in Beijing. When I was in Seoul, in Korea, in Iran, in New York, in Cairo, in Beirut, where I live, uh, in, in Johannesburg, in Casablanca, in Algiers, in Paris, in London, in five years, in my college degree in Los Angeles, in Boston, in San Francisco. You know, we are talking about, uh, I don't know how many cities I live, but maybe 24 cities. Where did you spend the longest? Uh, well, in the US, I spent 12 years. Hmm. Yeah, I did my college. But in degree. different places throughout the US. Los, yes, I lived in LA, in Los Angeles, well, Orange County, uh, Boston, where I got my college degree, um, New York, where I spent five years, and San Francisco, where mm -hmm. I lived with my first wife. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that in, in, the, in the US. <laughs> then I moved to France, so I spent a couple of years, and then I lived in Beirut. Then from Beirut, I moved to Johannesburg. From Johannesburg, I moved to Casablanca. From Casablanca, Morocco, I moved to Algiers. From Algiers, I moved to Cairo, the Arab Spring, the whole mess. Uh, from Cairo, I moved to London. From London, I moved to Seoul. Seoul to Tehran, back to Seoul, uh, Beijing. Uh, and then I moved to Dubai, only six months. But well, I live in Dubai as well. I moved to Toulouse in France, um, where I have my family. And then now I'm living uh, half the time in Toulouse and half the time in Madrid. Okay. So I'm, I'm jumping over the Pyrenees. Um, this is like a ping pong table tennis. Yeah. The and Pyrenees. you're still traveling. So you're. I mean, no, no, I travel, to... I, I, I travel every weekend. I mean, <laughs> I, I travel. I take, I take flights um, uh, every week. I'm taking planes. No, no, the, 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 this is like a project. A project never ends. This is the same thing. Mm. Once you start a lifestyle, a lifestyle like this, it's impossible to stop it. Mm. You see, uh, I'm, I'm shooting a film uh, this weekend. Uh, I'm doing a movie uh, that I spent 10 years filming uh, 10 countries. It's footage about all these cities from all around the world. It's like a sort of documentary. And I started the project in Iceland, in Reykjavik. And, you know, um, my, one of my best friends at the time, uh, he was the actor of the film. The film went to many film festivals. It was called The Trader. It did very well. But now, uh, imagine, uh, 10 years later, he's coming, you know, and we are shooting in Madrid because we want to do a documentary about how that sort of thing happened. And you see, so what I'm trying at the same time is to uh, connect the past. Yeah, I'm, I'm, You see, uh, he's going to new places, but not to forget about uh, where you come from. I think uh, I, I have Korea in my mind on a daily basis. I have the, the weather on my apps. Mm. The weather from all the cities where I live, the weather and the pollution level. Mm. And I look every day, uh, how is the weather in Tehran? How is the weather in Seoul? How is the weather in New York? You know, <laughs> and I, I, I love watching uh, the maps and, uh, and I have this reverie, you know, that of course, because we cannot live the past, future and present at the same time, I do recreate a lot with the past. And, mm. the, and that's how I use photography. And mm. film to to revisit the places where I've been, and so in a way I'm always connected. It's like a little of ex, 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 uh, obsessive with all of this, but um, the, these countries, these experiences, these photographs, these landscapes is basically my mind. is is everything I am. Yeah, yeah. It's, how, it's how I see it. Is there any one place that like affected you more than others? That really got to you more? Yes, 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 yes. Um, Yes, I think, uh, well, basically where there is drama and where mm. there are tragedies and you are part of it, mm. you have an instant connection with those places. Um, particularly if you're going through a relationship uh, mm. with someone. Uh, so places where I experienced this, uh, definitely Beirut, in Lebanon. I live there and I have my little flat in... Uh, I'm embracing this area in, uh, next to the Cornice, next to the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, but of course, you know, I went through the period that there were every Friday, basically there was a bomb every Friday. There were bombs every Friday. And, and eventually it was the war between Hezbollah and, and Israel. So it's true that at the time of the bombing, I was out, but then later I came back because I had my, my girlfriend was living there. So of course, you know, when you are there, and you are photographing the destruction of Dahi, this part of uh, Beirut, and you are there with the person that you love the most at that time. You know, basically, there is a strong 
uh, attachment with the place, yeah. no? Or, or when you are in New York, and I was taking a flight uh, right at the time of the September 11th. I was an American Airlines flight taking off uh, three minutes before the impact. Holy I'm an shit. Amer I'm American Airlines flight and I'm going to Miami. And I think I'm one of the last people to, to see the twins. You know, wow. so basically, basically, I always will have a, a connection with uh, with New York. Yeah. I'm, an, I'm a New Yorker myself. <laughs> no, uh, I feel yeah. like a part of me is also in Beirut, but when I was working in Tahrir Square in Cairo and I saw the whole Arab Spring in front of me, and I was part of the of the of the place where everything happened, mm. you know. And you know, I, I, there is a part of me that you know when I saw what happened over there, you know, you're in top of a building and you see how buildings are on fire and and a, a million people fighting against authorities in Tahari Square, and I was there, you know. I mean, there is a there is also a strong attachment. So in a mm. way, it's like. Um, you know, uh, if you do a physical, if you run a marathon in Seoul or in New York, I'm sure that people who run a marathon they feel a connection with the Big Apple. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But also, but also, if you are in the middle of a terrorist attack, uh, I can reassure you that you build up a, a strong connection with the place. So when you are traveling, again, I think there is the adventure and beautiful things happen, but uh, also sometimes. Uh, you know, I think uh, tragedy. It, it, it turned into tragedy, and I think you know, at the age of a very young age, when I was in New York, I lost my innocence. You know, when, when you know, not far from my house, you know, the, these two buildings they were destroyed by Al Qaeda. So, you know, uh, but I think it contributes to appreciate life, and and I never For been sure. in the situation to say, ah, well, I'm enough of of you know of traveling. I go back to my hometown in Santander. And that's it, you know. No, no, me, I'm, I'm, I, I like the exposure. I like the exposure, you know. And, you know, I have um, my wife, uh, my partner with uh, two kids in Toulouse, and I'm, I'm spending there, uh, you know, three days every week. You know, and Toulouse is an amazing place. It's an amazing place. So, well, so now maybe I don't have the excitement of going to Tehran, but you know what? I'm also enjoying the travel experience of going to Toulouse you know, and it's not as radical as it used to be uh, when I was in South Korea, uh, you know, two years ago. Yeah. But so you see, I'm always traveling. What I know for sure is that I'm not going to uh, to decide, well, I'm just uh, going to my home and that's it. And I'm, I'm going to watch Netflix. And no, 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 no. I mean, impossible. I always need some some right? adventure. Well, my legs can. I can go walk into Segovia or I can go walk into Avila. I can do a little crazy things. You know what I mean? It's always, yeah. you don't need to take a flight and go to Beijing or go to uh, La Habana in Cuba. You know, you can do lots of things, no? Hmm. Okay, so we're going to run out of time, but I think that a lot of people who would watch this I mean, I think would be inspired and motivated and excited to kind of make changes in their lives to have a bit more of that. Mm -hmm. Would you have any tips or recommendations for those people and also like warnings? Mm. Okay. Well, uh, well, I think it's about uh, uh, really uh, trying to find in life what makes you happy. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, some people maybe they enjoy more doing certain things, you know, in my case, when I tell about all these trips and all these, they think, Manuel, this is completely crazy. Yeah. But, maybe, but I have friends that I, friends similar to me that they don't think it's crazy because we basically do the same, the same things. So it's, it's not, it's not just me who is doing this. I have friends that they, they have the same philosophy as myself. So what I'm saying is that we've been trying, uh, I was trying to explain to you here is that this is not for, for everybody. Now, for those that they have this call, this call, no, that uh, in their minds that um, uh, about traveling, I will tell them definitely just just do it, jump and and do it. You don't need to plan anything in long term. What you're gonna do in three, four, five years? Just let it go, let it go. You need to have a objective. Of course, a final objective is to say, well, I want to keep myself traveling, going to places. Now, how to link it with your professional career or? In, in whatever way you can, 
I mean, try to find the formula, but put yourself the objective that you want to be traveling. You know, uh, if you if your dream is going to Asia, I think it's completely possible that one day you will end up living in Asia. But just put yourself the the plan and and start uh, start with something. I think that is very important um, uh, to be uh, to have a cultural relativism. Is don't don't travel thinking that your culture is better than any of those cultures where you're traveling. Be humble. Mm. Uh, if you are not able to communicate uh, with people, no problem. There are ways that you can levels of immersion in a society, even when it's difficult to connect. Yeah. Me, I'm the I'm the type that I'm perfectly perfectly comfortable recognizing that I don't belong there. Yeah. yeah. Or that is very challenging. You know, societies like Japan and Korea is difficult. But you know what? But it's beautiful, you know, to uh, to observe them. About things to be aware, um, uh, there are some trade-offs on the personal side. If you have a strong friendships in your home country and you have a strong ties with your family, uh, it can be challenging mm. because at the end, distance and space erode relationships. Mm. So a very good advice, and uh, I'm going to keep it short here, is try to invite your closest friends and family to be part of their experience. For instance, in my case, uh, my parents uh, and sisters, wherever I, I gone, they came with me. So at least once a year, they went to all the countries where I've been, awesome. not to climb those mountains, but they've been participating of that. So make them, give them the opportunity to also to travel because of the emotional connection uh, with you. Yeah. So invite them. And even if they don't want to go, you know, really buy them the plane ticket or do whatever, bring them there because their their experience will be so great that they will always thank you for, yeah. for bringing you there. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think there are ways that you can keep your family um, uh, connected and it's basically to tell them, look, uh, this year I'm not going there, but why don't you come uh, with your friends, come to Seoul or come to Tokyo or come to Beijing and and I will take you around and you will get to know this fascinating country. I think it's yeah. also important for them to know you because maybe they don't need to know all the places, but they won't understand you as well if they don't understand all these things you've experienced that they can't understand if they haven't traveled a bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, what I've uh, discovered with my parents is that uh, they have, well, they have a map a big map in their bedroom mm -hmm. uh, with all the places where they've been. Mm -hmm. and, and I get very happy because at least two thirds of all the places where they've been is been with uh, their children because it's not just me who travels, but also um, uh, my sisters, you know, my sisters, she lived in Montreal. My other sisters, she lived also in Los Angeles and in Boston and in other cities. Mm -hmm. So my parents, they've been pretty much enjoying uh, of the their children experiences <laughs> okay, you know, and, and then you know I'm sure that when they are in the bedroom you now they have a certain age and they look at the wall and they see those incredible countries they say well you know it, it wasn't all that bad if our children they were here yeah that's so true there is a sense of adventure and also the good thing is that your relationship with the family normally is very good because you are actually outside so the moment that you have with them is very precious yeah so when you're living with your family on a daily basis, every day, every day, every day, there could be some level of erosion. But when you're outside, you value you value them a lot and you miss them a lot. And, and you always have good stories to share. And, and there are many things happening. And, and you know, and, and I think that with the right balance, uh, if you invite them and they go, you know, I think there is it's perfectly fine to maintain a family. But you need to make an effort. You cannot forget them and you cannot just be yourself well i'm three years and i don't you know you know what i mean you need yeah. a permanent a permanent uh, to be in contact with them and now with the technologies that we have is it's perfectly fine so much easier yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i loved this i, lo you, I love you, your um, passion and your excitement I so. and i think yeah. it totally transmits i think it's so yes. much fun to hear um, i try i try to um to be, bring you a personal normally when i've been doing all their interviews it's more about the artwork or about the film but i think and now, uh, particularly when I start talking to you, um, I thought that uh, I could go a little farther in For my sure. uh, in my personal side. That normally is, is not what other people ask you when it's you go for interviews. So, so I think is <laughs> I, I think that hopefully the 
and the people who watch it they they enjoy because you know I try myself to be very sincere and and tell you about myself. No, in these amazing years of uh, somebody from Spain with a thirty years uh, non-stop travel. No, somebody from everywhere now. Somebody from everywhere. <laughs> yes. The other thing, you know, um, and there is another sentence that I think is that we are geographical accidents. You know, you are from the U.S. I'm from Spain, but it, we are, it's a it's a random decision why you are here. Totally you true. know why you are in the U.S. or what I'm in in Spain. So I don't believe on the idea of borders, and I wish that one day, you know, we have more of a universal identity and not so much shaped by by local forces. Hmm. You know? And I think that me, I'm, I mean, of course, we need some local, uh, of course, to get the grasp of the local culture, but always from uh, starting from uh, the universal first. We are citizens of this planet followed by layers. And at the end, yes, uh, you might be from Missouri or from St. Louis or from Santander or from Jakarta, no? But the important thing is that, you know, get this universal understanding. And then from there, yes, yeah, there are layers. And yes, and at the end, you are from Santander. And maybe in Santander, I'm from this particular neighborhood, yes. But um, but always the, the broader uh, geography, no? Earthlings. We're all earthlings. Exactly. <laughs> geographical, that's for now. <laughs> but geographical accidents. That, that's yes, okay. Geographical accidents. We're all geographical accidents. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you for your time and eh? interviewing me. I really enjoyed it. Me too. Yeah. I hope I hope either we do this again here on the podcast whenever, or in person. Whenever you want. Great. Eh? Really, whenever you want. It's been a pleasure. I really, I really, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. I wish awesome. it was longer. Eh? Okay. <laughs> Very good. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye, bye. bye.